when you type your password into a website, what exactly happens? Aren't you concerned? What if the website gets hacked or the developer sees it? When you type your password on a website, they will save your password in plain text. If they are a psychopath, instead, they pass your password through some function which transforms your password into something from which it is impossible to reverse back to your original password. To understand what those functions are, check this set of numbers. And these numbers are so secret that only people with elite ball knowledge have these numbers. Now, assume someone else claims that they have these numbers and they want to tell you that they have this number. How can they tell you that if they are not with you? If they mail you or message you, the secrecy breaks because anyone, or at least the government, can see then. One thing that they can do is add their numbers and send you the sum. Once you have the sum, you can add your numbers and compare both sums. If both match, you know he is legit, and there is no way someone in the middle can know your number set. Because sure, they can find a set easily that sums up to that sum, but they have no way of knowing whether that set is your set. In fact, someone can have an infinitely different set of numbers that will sum up to that sum, but the certainty that that set is your set is zero. Hiding some data like this is known as hashing, and the output is known as a hash. Now we can apply this same principle while saving a password on a website. You just revealed that that set of numbers was actually your password, and you are saving on a website. Instead of saving your set, you save the sum. We can call the thing that hashes our set a hash function. A hash function must be deterministic, meaning whenever you type your password, the website can hash it, which should produce the same hash, and then compare it with the previously saved hash to know that you know your stuff. But we have a problem. One can easily find a set, aka a password, that will produce the hash. So they can log into your account without knowing your exact password. Something known as the pre-image attack. Given a hash, one tries to find an input that produces the hash. To prevent this, we can make your function stricter. Like, instead of just adding, let's swap the first and last number and the middle numbers, multiply by the first number, and subtract the last number. With this rule, it is a bit harder to find an input that produces that hash just by having a hash. But a real hash function should be reasonably hard, if not impossible, to find an input that produces the hash just by having the hash. This is known as the pre-image resistant. Now, we don't just use hashing for protecting passwords. Sometimes we use them for validation. Let's say you downloaded a big file from the internet. Now, how could you know that the file is unchanged? There comes another important property of a hash function. A hash function should produce a fixed size hash for any input. SHA-256 is a real-world hashing algorithm that produces a fixed 256-bit hash. Now we can validate our download just by checking the hash. This thing is known as a checksum. To make this more reliable, it should be infeasible to find two inputs that will produce the same hash. Something is known as the collision resistant. The last attribute a hashing function should have is this. Check the hash of this image file. Now, I am going to change one pixel of this image to a slightly different color. But our hash changes entirely, unpredictably. With all of these combined, we would have a perfect function to save our passwords without worrying about someone seeing them. Because there is nothing to see. 